forces crushed dozens of terrorists belonging to Al-Qaeda organization in several areas. At Tahrir Square in Cairo witnesses a new massive demonstration that calls for delivering Egypt from the grip of absolute power. Two terrorist explosions in Kirkuk kill and wound dozens of Iraqis. Good afternoon, this is Zerado Krikorian with the news in English. A suicide terrorist blast in a booby-trapped car carrying the stamp of Al-Qaeda organization has killed two citizens and injured four in Jdaydat Artuz in Damascus suburbs. The explosion also left material damage on the site. An armed unit has eliminated a number of terrorists belonging to Al-Qaeda organization. They had committed acts of killing and vandalism at the entrance of Zamelka in Damascus suburbs. Among the killed terrorists, Ahmed Khalil Idris, Bashir Kherban and Muhammad Noor Abboud, nicknamed Abu Khadouj, were identified. Our armed forces have continued to clear the resource city of the armed terrorist groups that wreaked havoc and spread panic among citizens in the governorate. An army unit intercepted an armed terrorist group belonging to Al-Qaeda organization. The group had stolen and smuggled oil to Turkey through tanks in Abu Khashab district in the resource suburbs. An official source in the governorate said a number of terrorists were killed and others wounded. Among the killed was the leader of the group, Saddam. Awad al Sahu, nicknamed the bird. Another unit targeted a terrorist group in Al Jubaila neighborhood in Deir Zor, killing and wounding its members. Among the killed terrorists, Muhammad Jasim Ibrahim and Saad, Saad Samer al Ghatban were identified. The source added that a leader of a terrorist group called Ali Amin Khudr al Hussein was wounded in the clashes and was moved to Turkey for treatment. In Idlib countryside, a unit of our Syrian Arab army raided a hideout of a terrorist group called Al Nusra Front, which is affiliated to Al Qaeda, killing a number of the terrorists in the town of Mhambil in Jusr al Shughur. Among the terrorists killed was the leader of the group, Abdul Majid Khudr. In Ma'arat al Norman, a unit of our Syrian Arab army clashed with a terrorist group that tried to attack a police checkpoint. The clashes resulted in the killing of a number of terrorists and the injury of others, while a variety of their weapons, including modern communication devices, were seized. Another unit of our army destroyed a terrorist hideout and a store of weapons and ammunition in Atme, near Harim. Meanwhile, 15 terrorists were killed in a roadside bomb that exploded while they were planting it on the road between Darkush and Zarzur in Idlib countryside. An army unit has destroyed a training camp that was used by terrorist groups as a headquarters for their criminal operations in Kafar Takharim town in Idlib suburbs. A number of terrorists were killed and others were wounded in the operation. Another army unit eliminated a number of terrorists and injured others in Jubar Paklavun village in Idlib suburbs. In another context, the engineering unit today dismantled four explosive devices planted by terrorists in Ariha Mhammel Road near Psankalum village, each weighing 100 kilograms and prepared to be remoted, remotely exploded. In Hama, our Syrian Arab army carried out two operations, killing a number of Al-Qaeda terrorists in the village of Asayla to, to the south of the city. The operations also resulted in the destruction of 10 of the terrorist vehicles, including three pickups equipped with Doshka, which the terrorists used in attacking the villagers and their properties.
The party's affairs committee, headed by Major General Mohammed Ashaar, the Minister of Interior, has discussed with the Human Development Committee at the Council of Ministers the amendments proposed to be introduced into the party's law 100 of 2011. Major General Ashaar referred to the turning point the political life in Syria has witnessed after the issuance of the party's law, which resulted in setting up 11 new parties in addition to the parties of the National Progressive Front. Major General Ashaar talked about the reason behind preparing the party's draft law amendment, namely to be in conformity with the new constitution, particularly Article 8, and to address some of the shortcomings that appeared during the phase of practical application and to offer other facilities for the process of parties' establishment. After discussing the provisions of the party's draft law amendment, a joint formula was reached that included most of the proposed amendments. A recommendation was referred in this respect to concerned parties. Opponents of President Mohamed Morsi rallied in Cairo's at Tahrir Square for the fifth day, stepping up calls to cancel the constitutional announcement which was approved by the President last Thursday and demanding to dissolve the Committee of the Constitution. Many leftist, liberal and socialist groups erected the platform for the protest in At-Tahrir Square, chanting against the Muslim Brotherhood and the Interior Ministry. The Judges Club and the Supreme Judicial Council said that giving immunity to the President's decisions concerning the interior affairs, the law and the Constitution can't be considered as an act of sovereignty. In the contrary, this decree ushers to an era of autocracy. At the conclusion of a meeting between the President and a delegation of the Judicial Council yesterday, spokesmen for the Presidency announced that there won't be amendments to the Constitutional Declaration which triggered a wave of anger and protests. A new Israeli breach of the ceasefire took place in Gaza today when Israeli artillery killed a Palestinian woman in Al Shujaya neighborhood east of Gaza and injured two other Palestinians near Karim Abu Salem, crossing east of Rafah, south of Gaza. Furthermore, the number of victims of the Israeli aggression has risen to more than 175 martyrs and the injured to 1,398, mostly women and children. Three people were killed and more than 20 others were injured in two terrorist explosions in Kirkuk, north of Iraq. The explosions were caused by two booby-trapped cars and an attack with explosive devices. The first blast targeted the headquarters of the Kurdistani Democratic Party in Ashurja, east of Kirkuk. It killed two people and injured 18 others. The second car blew up northeast of the city. Two explosive devices exploded when a police and army patrol was passing by in Al Hawaja district. Three army and police personnel were killed. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more information about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Gunjian after a short break.